Welcome to our Yeast Free and Beyond webinar. My name is Sally Kerr and I'm the Vice President of Wellness Programs and Education for the Hotze Health and Wellness Center and for Physicians Preference. I have asked Dr. David Sheridan, who is lead physician for the Hotze Health and Wellness Center, to join us here today. And Dr. Sheridan, you and I were just discussing how long you were at, have been at the Wellness Center. And I'll be here 12 years this March. And I've been here 10. Uh, been so a long we, time. Have, we have learned so much uh, just working together and uh, Anyways, our, our passion is just helping people with making some lifestyle changes. And so many of you are participating in the 30-Day Yeast Free With Me Challenge right now. And so we are going to help uh, teach you today and give you some tips and tools on how to reintroduce some of those other foods because really it's not just a 30-day or a 90-day treatment. It's a lifestyle change. Isn't Absolutely. It? Um, if we want to be healthy and well, we need proper nutrition, proper diet. The good news is perfection is rarely required. I mean, there are some people because of health issues really need to be very restrictive in what they eat, very specific in what they avoid. But for most of us, perfection is not required. But by and large, the better you eat, the better you do, the longer you live. Right, and it's, it's so confusing because all the foods that are out there right now are packaged, convenient, <coughs> fast. Really, it's not even food anymore, correct? And I, I'm thinking of it the same way. If it doesn't have any nutrition, it's really not food. It's not food. And that's hard for a lot of us to really wrap our hands around because we're brought up eating things that are so bad for us, but we don't fall over and die right away. But the accumulation of poor nutrition, the accumulation of chemicals and things we shouldn't be eating at all takes its toll. And actually, today's children are not expected to live as long, maybe, as their parents. Right, because that's what their diets yeah. are composed of, um, which is what's really awesome when people have done this, this Yeast Free With Me is it impacts their families' mm -hmm. lives, too. Uh, but then, so then you make it through that first 30 days, and then you start reintroducing some foods. This is a key time to really uh, journal, and as you reintroduce those foods, we're watching out for food allergies, right? Because we've restricted the top food allergens. You have. You've eliminated probably an order of um, frequency uh, wheat, cow's milk, and corn. Those are probably the three most common food allergies in that order. Remember wheat today is not wheat. <clears throat> wheat today is a totally different plant than even when we were kids. Okay, and if my timing's wrong, and today's wheat's older than I just said, it's still not wheat. It's a totally unique genetically much more complex plant and I think that's one reason why it causes a host of problems but the key is again um, we're not reintroducing things because we must right. we're reintroducing things because we're wondering gosh I like eating some of these things can I have some once in a while and still be healthy and for the most part there are exceptions but for the most part the answer is yes so as you reintroduce you need to be a little scientific about it because you want to see how you tolerate what you're adding back. And it can be tricky. It does take a fair amount of detective work sometimes to figure some of these things out. Right. And we've always said, I mean, what I find fascinating is if you add something on Monday mm -hmm. and you feel fine on Tuesday, that doesn't really mean anything yet. We've, you can have that delayed reaction. You can, and thankfully that's less common. Mm -hmm. So you can take things at face value. If I cheat with it today, and I call it a cheat because, no, I shouldn't have ice cream. Right. Plain and simple, no, I shouldn't have it. Well, it's just this little amount, and I don't do it very often. That's fine. That's a personal right. choice. Okay, I'm big on personal choice. But if I have it today, and I feel okay through today and tomorrow, that's a good sign it's just not perfect. Right. So if I follow that as a rule, and it's working for me, I think we're doing fine. When I'm not feeling well after maybe a week or two, Mm -hmm. My first suspect is what did I add most recently, just understanding that there may be some confusion here and it may be an item or two back. You just have to understand this is not as cut and dried as we'd like, right. but you can still approach it in that fashion because when it works, you're doing fine, and if it doesn't, you just have to rethink a few steps. Right, and it's so important to write it down Mm -hmm. Because if you try to remember what you had three days ago, it's hard for me to remember mm -hmm. what I had, you know, last mm -hmm. night at dinner. A lot of life uh, going on, huh? <laughs> a lot of <laughs> life goes on, and those just aren't things that mm -hmm. you, you think about. Yeah. Uh, so it's very important to do that. Um, 
you've had some personal experience with food allergies. I'm allergic to pretty much everything. Right. So you, it, it, he knows it. He, mm -hmm. he walks, this, walks this talk. Thankfully, though, my symptoms aren't severe. I'm under really good control being on treatment. Uh, now, that's for airborne, but that often lessens my reactions to foods. So I still clear my throat. I still sniffle here and there. Um, but it doesn't matter what I eat. I usually get a little symptomatic here and there. Right. But they're mild enough, and if I stay clean enough and cheat infrequently enough, it's really pretty manageable. And our bodies are amazing because they will let us do a lot of things in moderation. Mm -hmm. And moderation can mean many things mm -hmm. to, to many people. Um, but generally moderation is if you have a small serving of something, maybe once, maybe twice a week. But really you have to listen to your body. Your body's going to tell you, right? It's really amazing. I think if, if you had some obvious yeast symptoms, let's say reflux. Mm -hmm. If you do whatever it is you do to go after yeast and are successful getting rid of the reflux, maybe you didn't do it our way. Maybe you did it your way, but you're successful. Right. If you add something back and you get a little reflux and you didn't cheat very much, I, I use the, um, the comparison of like two to three golf balls. Even if you don't play golf, you know what a golf ball is. Right. Okay. So if you look at that kind of amount once or twice a week, and if you do that, and you don't get away with it. Now, is it because you still have a yeast issue and you fed yeast and you're getting symptomatic or might it be a food allergy? And again, we're back to detective work. It's just the way it is. If you ride this out for several weeks, and it does take several weeks to do this, mm -hmm. or longer, if you see a pattern where if there's any dairy involved, I get symptomatic, but if there's not, if there's grain involved, corn chips, or I had a brownie or whatever, um, you're seeing a definite pattern, you're probably dealing with a food allergy. Right. Now, these are just general rules of thumb, but if you do your routine, if you're successful getting rid of your yeast symptoms, but it doesn't matter how you cheat, how infrequently your symptoms come back, you're probably dealing with you, that you still have a yeast issue. Right. And something I find fascinating is um, your symptoms that you can have that are uh, from a food allergy, because mm -hmm. sometimes people think, well, it's a GI <coughs> upset mm -hmm. or something, but it can be anything from a headache to a poor mood to fatigue. I think we have to be clear about food allergy here. and there, There's not total agreement in the allergy world, so that's life. There are Democrats, Republicans, and there are people <laughs> right. that believe in yeast and people that don't, okay? Right. But we look at this as if I eat shrimp and I get asthma, eat shrimp, I get hives. We call that a fixed food allergy. Mm -hmm. As far as anybody knows, uh, to my knowledge, it's lifelong, can't change it, don't eat shrimp. And it gets worse, your whatever. reaction gets worse where it could end it up can. In, in death. It can, mm -hmm. some people get a little wheezy and that's it. And if they try to cheat because they love the peanuts or the shrimp or whatever, um, that may continue and they may get away with it, but the problem is anytime they cheat, that can escalate to a fatal reaction. And I know right. of one case in my career that that's exactly what happened. They cheated a little bit, roughly monthly, and then of one course. time they cheated and died with wow. no escalation. So I would not recommend playing with that kind of food allergy. So okay? if you know you have that, mm -hmm. just sure. stay away from that. Don't ever try to reintroduce it. That would be it. my advice. Right. Um, a cyclic food allergy is the more confusing because that is strongly related to the dose, the amount I eat each time, and the frequency, okay? Right. So the more corn I eat, the less frequently I need to be exposed to it before I get symptomatic. Right. If it's a small enough amount, I may be able to, might be able to have that once a week and, be fine. and not get symptomatic so long as I've gone through an elimination period. Right. Okay? So you've kind of <clears throat> given your body time to calm down, and then in moderation, it will let you have it occasionally. Maybe less than moderation. <clears throat> that, that's a real relative Maybe term. Maybe once, once every couple of weeks. Uh, uh, you, it, you really just have to figure exactly. it out, and that's where that detective yeah. work comes yeah. in. It, it's um, really individual. When, and you, you used corn as an example, mm -hmm. and um, sometimes people think, well, I don't eat that much corn, but corn The food is industry puts corn in everything. It's in cheap. everything. It's in uh, any soft drink. Right, all, High all fructose corn syrup, which is even worse. This is not mm -hmm. a naturally occurring substance in nature. So man's made so it. So when some guy in the commercial says it's made from corn, it must be great, 
Um, really. They're just not telling you the truth. Okay, this is a highly addictive substance. Um, it causes a, an exaggerated insulin response. And people think calories, remember insulin's the other part of the equation. Right. Chemically, insulin puts us in a fat making mode. Right. Wheat does the similar, causes a, an exaggerated insulin response so that you could be having five, six, seven pounds on your frame from nothing other than toast twice a week right. because the insulin response it creates puts you in a fat making mode and then even the good things you eat, well, you're eating them while you're in fat making mode. So your body just stores so, them. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, which is really so, not what we're trying to do. These are just some, some tricks to the trade. If you're getting confused, it is confusing, but again, th there are different opinions about how strict to be, even with different yeast programs. If you right. follow one strictly and it works, well, that one works for you. Mm -hmm. If you follow it strictly and it doesn't work, then you have to look at something else. And, it, and it's okay, there's time. If you're talking lifestyle change, there's time to do this your way, right. so long as it works. When it doesn't work, that's when you either have to accept what you have or change what you're doing. Right. And that's so huge because <coughs> if, if you don't want to make any changes, then what you have is what you what get. What you have is what you're going to yeah. get. Um, and so some people, it, it's changing diet mm -hmm. is one of the hardest things to do. Uh, we've actually come up with a new program. It's called Lifestyle Changes mm -hmm. to help people. As you, can, as you can tell, it's pretty complex and it's not just here's what you need to follow. It really, it's individualized. It has to fit into your lifestyle and what you're sensitive to sure. and what your body will tolerate. Um, and so we, we do have that available. If you're interested in more information, go to lifestylechanges.hotzevitamins.com. You can also right now just click on the right side of your screen for more information. Um, our phone number is 1-800-579-6545. Dr. Sheridan, you are just a wealth of knowledge. Um, well, I can't thank you. Thank you. I mean, but it's been a personal experience. And then working <clears throat> with how many how many guests have you worked with? Oh, seven thousand or so. Yeah, that's some, that's yeah. some heavy duty experience, yeah, we'll and everybody's a, a little bit different. But the basic things are there. Even if you look at the different uh, um, different opinions about should mm -hmm. I eat five meals a day, three meals a day, six smaller meals a day. That can be confusing, but if you go back and see where those different opinions agree, there's a very strong agreement on getting rid of sugar, dairy, and grains. Right. Disagreement probably comes with grains. I don't believe in healthy grains. Okay, others do. Right. right? But if you're talking a lifestyle change, pick one. And I, that's exactly what I tell people. If you don't like my way, if you like their way, then do it. Do it like gospel. Right. Let's see how you do. Right, and one thing that we really promote here, I don't think we've ever seen anybody say not to do this, and that's to eat more vegetables. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> so we, the more vegetable dominant we are, the better we do. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Again, thank you so mm -hmm. much for joining You're us, quite Dr. Welcome. Sheridan. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.